Welcome to the Clear Health Podcast, where we discuss the awesome aspects of lifestyle medicine and direct primary care, an innovative and highly personal solution to the problems in healthcare today. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Tom Roundtree, and I'm a board certified family medicine physician who focuses on lifestyle medicine, and I practice in Sterling Heights, Michigan. So today we're going to talk about direct primary care, a little bit of the history, how it's different from traditional or insurance-based care, and how it can actually really benefit you. So direct primary care is a membership-based primary care clinic that offers easy access to your doctor, low-cost imaging, low-cost labs, and low-cost medications, and longer visits that can be more personalized to you. This was actually started back in 2010 by a group of doctors who realized that the insurance or fee-for-service was not doing very well for their patients as well as their own livelihood. So they saw these inefficiencies and they kind of wanted to change them. Today we have around 4,000 practices in the U.S. and it keeps growing. So between 2011 and 2017, they grew by 241%. And then just recently across the pandemic, they grew by about 21%. So while insurance-based practices actually decrease by 10%. So you can kind of see that they stand the test of time and they can um, be very, very good for those during like significantly bad times, like a pandemic. In 2021, the Kaiser Family Foundation sent out a survey to businesses and asked them, hey, how much do you pay actually for insurance? Like, what are your premiums? And they found out that the family premium was twenty around $22,000. And this had actually increased from 2011. It increased 47%, while the business profits only increased by 31%. And that meant the insurance cost was outpacing the profits of the business. And, ha- and you can see how this is not good, right? Like the business needs to have steady profits where it can pay these things. And if these other things are increasing, well, they won't be able to pay for them. So we also have another problem. One in four people don't go to the doctor's office because they don't know what the price is. They, they're, gonna, they're afraid, just like I would be, of getting a surprise bill later that is, you know, thousands of dollars that they don't even know about. So I'll tell you a story um, of the $12,000 bandages. So I was sitting there seeing a patient. This is back when I practiced in the insurance model, seeing the patient and my nurse pops her head in the door and she goes, Hey, there's another patient out here. Do you mind seeing him? And my lunch break was coming up and I knew him, fantastic, really nice guy. I said, yeah, sure, just, you know, I'll I'll see him, just uh, put him in in my next room, and I'll go and see him. So I go in there, and he has this really red and swollen leg, and I go, oh, man, uh, it's pretty swollen. I'm a little concerned about it, so let me, you know, set up some labs for you, some diagnostic testing, some imaging, and let me just wrap your leg with some bandages because fluid was seeping out of it. And he goes, and he didn't really say anything. It just, he kind of looked towards the ground and I asked him again, I said, well, do you want me to wrap it with bandages? And he goes, well, yeah, doc, but I'm just, I'm I'm worried about how much it's going to cost. And I'm thinking in my head, well, uh, it's not going to really cost anything. Like even for the practice, it doesn't cost a lot of money at all. And he goes, because the last time when I went to, you know, this other like wound care clinic, they charged me $12,000. And I was like, what? And at first your brain goes, that's impossible, right? Like you think that this thing is impossible. There's no way. And so I go, $12,000? And he goes, he goes, yeah, my insurance covered for some of it, but I still had to pay back, I think he said like 3000 or something. And I was like, just to go to a wound care clinic, right? That's, that's, 
that's crazy. In my mind, it's crazy. So I said, okay, look, these bandages aren't going to cost you anything. And I gave him, I wrapped him up and I put like six or seven extras in a bag for him until he could go to the wound care clinic that I trusted and see them. And I confirmed with the wound care clinic. I said, your bandages don't cost as much, right? And I even called, you know, accounting, all that stuff. And so he was afraid of going, right? It's a, it's a story where we're afraid to go because we don't know, which should not be the case. And that definitely needs to change. And these prices can actually bankrupt people, which you can check out. There's a good book called uh, The Price We Pay by Marty McCary. He's a general surgeon uh, from John Hopkins who actually flew around the country gathering this type of data. Like, why do people go bankrupt when there's these nonprofit hospitals that should be helping them out? And in fact, by law, they're supposed to help them out with a certain percentage of the bills. And so it's very, um, it's very damaging to these people's lives and they have to file for bankruptcy. And this surgeon actually went to the courtrooms and would testify against these hospitals. Um, the other thing is, is that one third of GoFundMe campaigns are for medical bills, right? So if these are for medical bills, you know, it, it, this shouldn't be happening either. So something needed to change, right? So this is part of why these doctors uh, went to direct primary care, the subscription-based model that's like Netflix. And it makes it very easy. You know the price, you know, and the average price is 75 a month. And even if you pay 75, you're an adult, uh, the kids' pricing is much cheaper. It's like 25, 35, sometimes 45, but it's much cheaper than the adult. And you know exactly what you're getting. They tell you right on the website. And so what are some of the other inefficiencies that they saw? Well, one of them was they had no time with their patients, only 15 minutes. And that 15 minutes, you know, you have to diagnose, treat, and explain to the patient what's going on. Well, in 15 minutes, you, you don't have that amount of time, especially in family medicine, because not only do you have to do that, you have to do preventive care. You have to tell them, don't do these things or, you know, get this test maybe for your heart or a colonoscopy. And you have to go through that as well. And that's literally impossible in 15 minutes. They also didn't have time to call their patients back. So they were seeing so many patients that they couldn't call their patients back. So they, you know, you have a certain lab that you're waiting on. You know, maybe you got HIV testing or something. And now... You don't know what that is. And the doc had said, well, look, we'll call you back in, you know, a couple of days when it comes and you're just waiting on the call. It's like day three and you don't know what's going on. So it's very, very scary. And that was a big problem for them. The other thing was that there were too many people in between them and the patient. The patient was getting mixed signals, one from the, the insurance, two from the large amount of office staff that you have to get when you have insurance. And the urgent care doctors where the patient had to go because they couldn't get in to see their, um, their own doctor. So they were seeing too many patients, which resulted in this poor quality, right? Because it's a trade-off. The more patients you see, the more the quality goes down. And we know this like for a fact. And the, one of the other worst things with the, the software design for the doctor to see the patient, record the the encounter, you know, was horribly designed, right? So you're trying to work through seeing the patient 15 minutes but all the time. You're like staring at the computer and trying to type into it while the patient is looking at you going, well, you know, is, can I trust this doctor, right? Well, a lot of times it's the eye contact that makes you trust the doctor. So that was really low. And it, it wasn't... It wasn't building trust with the patient, not to mention because of the software, they had to go home and finish the chart. So all of these inefficiencies starting adding up on top of all that, just like the story we discussed, the cost of medications, labs and imaging was, 
you know, far too high, like far, far too high. So I've seen labs that are, you know, $150 for the yearly labs, when in fact those things run anywhere from 10 to $20. And all of this adds up, you know, against the doctor and against the patient, and it leads to this burned out state, or I should say worn out state, because all of these things start adding up, and it's as if every day you're encountering some kind of block to either treating the patient or getting to see the doctor. So all these added up and it results in just this horrible system that is not good for primary care. Now, insurance, you know, it has three main problems with it. One, uh, when you're in practice, they deny medications. So you get this denial back from the insurance saying, well, we're not going to, you know, cover that. So you have to go back to the books and look and say, okay, this is the other medication that, that can treat this disease, right? And that can take some time. That can take time out of your day. And if you're seeing all these patients, you don't have time to go and do that. Not to mention, you know, the software problems that you're having as well. And so now you hire somebody for that. So there's a cost, that's one person, the person to handle denial payment for the medications. And then the next thing is denial payment for the visit. So sometimes a visit doesn't get paid because you haven't ticked off every box and now the insurance is like, mm, we're not going to pay that. So you have to hire somebody for that called a biller and a coder. The next person you have to hire is somebody to pre-authorize things like imaging or procedures like a colonoscopy. So the insurance goes, well, you have to call us, you know, before all this happens and you have to check with us and make sure that that's covered, even though it's medically necessary, right? So now you have all of this staff, you have a nurse, you have a biller, you have a pre-authorization person and, you know, you have to hire a manager to manage all of these people. And so now you have four people that you're paying, and that overhead is massively high. And the only way you get paid is by seeing a patient. That's what the contract says in the insurance. And so now you have all this overhead um, because you've taken insurance. And insurance has put all these little barriers in the way. Now, insurance is good for catastrophic things. Like when you get in a car wreck, right? You get in a car wreck and your car gets covered and you take it to the collision expert, and you pay a little bit of money, and then the insurance takes care of the rest. It's good for catastrophic things. And that's how insurance banks on it. They say, well, there's a chance of you having this, so we'll cover that when that happens. But it's the chance that they rely on to sustain their own business. And so when you have something that occurs just all the time, it's not good for insurance. That model isn't good for covering that. And so that's why you have things like a deductible or you have a copay or something like that, because they're telling you, well, you know, insurance is for catastrophic care and that's what you should have it for. So what's the secret key to direct primary care and, and what are the benefits that come from it? So the secret key is that the doctor only sees four to 500 patients versus the 2,000 to 2,500 patients that a normal insurance-based doctor would see. And now, since they're seeing less patients, they can actually schedule more time with you throughout the day. And the quality of care goes up, right? Not only that, but you can ask them more questions and they can answer them right there in the room and a lot of times I like to draw it out for the patient, but they can answer it right there in the room and you get really good answers to your, you know, really, really important question. Not only that, but they can pick up the phone and call you back. So this relationship starts to develop. It's very deep and personal and you become more trusting of your own doctor. Uh, and the only thing that the other thing they can do is they can actually call the uh, specialist if they don't know the answer to your problem. So they call the specialist and now you don't have to always go to the specialist or go to another doctor. 
because they can develop that plan right there for you. And you're not spending all this money at that specialist office. And I'll tell you something else that's very, very interesting. If a specialist orders lab work, it's costing more than if the family doctor orders it. And that's the way it works through insurance. It's kind of crazy, but that's the way it works. So not only that, but your doctor is actually less stressed and is more has a more positive outlook on life. And that's exactly what you want. You want them to be less stressed because now their brain will actually figure out um, more answers to your problem. There's a great book by this research scientist uh, called Barbara Fredericton, and I'll put the link in the show notes. The book is called Positivity, and it goes through and talks about how, oh, for several years we, you know, we talked about other issues like depression, anxiety, but just recently we've discovered that positivity has massive amounts of benefits. And so the doctors are stressed, they can figure out your problems better. And not only that, but there's fewer patients in the waiting room. So now with fewer patients in the waiting, waiting room, there's less chance of you getting sick. And with less overhead in the office, the cost of care goes down. So supplies, the cost of supplies goes down. And those bandages may be only 10 bucks, right? At the, at the doctor's office. Um, because the membership itself is actually paying for them. And one thing my doctor does, who's a direct primary care doctor, he actually offers ultrasound in his office. And a lot of doctors can do this for free because it's a very useful tool. They can do it for free, and now that price isn't tacked on to the total cost of your care. It's absorbed into the membership, and you're not paying for it. So imaging is paid for, right? It's, it's a wild concept. And I've seen other doctors who have tried to set up x-rays uh, for free for their community as well. So, you know, the doctor community is very altruistic. They want to actually help because otherwise they're, the whole purpose of life is not satisfied, right? They took the oath to help and protect people and that's what they want to do. So I hope that was really informative about the uh, direct primary care and it's a very fantastic model. My family is a part of it and my mom goes to one which is really great. It's a new and upcoming model. You can find these practices if you type into Google, type in DPC space mapper.com or just mapper and i'll put the link in the show notes below and you'll be able to search for one which is right next to you and once again my name is dr tom roundtree you can check me out my clinic is uh, clear health medical it's at www.clearhealthmedical.com and let me know in the comments below like what else you want to hear about um and what other guests you'd like to see. Um, next episode, I'm going to have a mindfulness teacher who's been teaching for a very long time. Um, she got training done at a really good university. She's very nice. And next time we'll have her on. And I hope to see you there. All right. Thanks so much. Have a happy and healthy day.